I'm Sandy from Oh My Crafts, one of the owners. Um, my husband Kevin and I started Oh My Crafts about seven years ago out of our house and it's grown to a 25,000 square foot warehouse. And we're really excited to be with you today and with all the folks from Crop Chocolate. Today we're going to be making a chocolate kiss. I have a few different examples of different kinds of things you can do. The silver one is a heat embossed um, chocolate kiss. This one is paper that's mod podged and wrapped in wire. On the back side of it, I embossed metal. And um, this one again is actually piecing together the designs to say, they'll always kiss me goodnight. And again, more paper. So we're going to go ahead and get started. We're super excited to be part of this online crop for National Scrapbook Day. And one of the first things we do in deciding on our wood project is, first of all, of course, choosing your wood, and then um, deciding the, the kind of pattern of paper, what you're going to be putting on it. So for this project, I chose, this is brand new in from Canvas Corp. It's their Craft Black. Um, damask pattern and I thought it would give a really elegant look to our chocolate kiss, kind of a dark chocolate thing. And so the first thing we're going to do is trace our patterns. You might think that you would want to do the opposite side, but I have found the most success if I put it directly on top of my paper with how it will look when it's on the top side of here. So all I'm going to do is go ahead and Trace the outline of my kiss. I usually go over it a couple times just because this is dark and maybe a little harder to see. And if you're not as picky about pattern placement, um, you might not have some of the waste over here that I have. But I wanted to see if I could get this pretty lined up with my design. So. I don't know if the camera can show that line on there. That one's a little tough to see, but um, we're going to go ahead and cut that out in just a moment. But the next thing we're going to do is trace our kiss, and this one's going to be on this side, so I flipped my wood over. And I'm just going to go ahead and place this on my metal. We are going to use Tim Holtz alcohol inks, and we're going to color this metal. And the color we're using for that is an espresso. And you would think that espresso would be a dark brown, kind of a blackish color. And it actually comes out looking kind of a deep purple. So I think it'll be kind of a fun color to combine with this paper. So there we've got our kiss. And we'll go ahead and cut those out in just a minute. The next thing we're going to do is take this Tim Holtz Distressed ink. This is black soot and, um, excuse me, I said ink, but it's a stain. It's a water based stain and that means it'll wash off your hands. It doesn't have that yucky smell that a lot of stains have. And we're just going to go ahead and color the sides of our kiss. And it's as easy as this. You just literally dab the stain on. And it's really great because it's mess free, it doesn't smell, it washes off your hands. I will tell you though that the dark colors sometimes take two or three washings to get off if you've been um, not so careful with it. Now in terms of sanding on this, um, everybody does things just a little bit different. Some of our designers never sand before they start. I tend to sand just a little bit, and I did that before we started filming, just because I think it takes the stain a little easier. So now I'm going to flip over and do the other side. And if you find that your stain is um, maybe drying up a little bit, you can gently squeeze on the side of the bottle. And I want to emphasize gently, because this little dabber right here, if you squeeze too hard, will pop off and go all over your table and um, possibly your clothes, ruin your project. So you can press, but don't press too hard. Um, you probably have guessed we've had that experience in our design room. And um, 
it wasn't too much fun to clean up, I'll be real honest. I'll also tell you it wasn't me that did it, so maybe that's why I thought it was a little bit funny, because it wasn't me. But as you can see, this just glides on really nicely. And if you get to a spot that is a little tough to get into, this one's not really too bad, but what you can do is squeeze on your bottle just a little bit, and you'll see it come out, and I just kind of draw it out like that. And then I take a foam brush. So on some of our more complicated wood items, like when you're going in between letters and things, you might need to do this and go over it. You might also be wondering about this pink surface that I'm working on. This is um, a mat from Tattered Angels. It's called a misting mat. Basil also sells one that's called a splat mat. Um, Lifestyle Crafts has a mat that goes with their letterpress kit. All of them are a non-stick surface. And what that means is you can just put your stuff right on here, just like that, use it. And then when you're done, um, wipe it up. A little bit of Windex or something can go a long way. I just thought as I was going over this, I might fill in just a few more of those little spots. And touch up right across the top there. And you can see that was pretty fast and not nearly as messy sometimes as painting can be. So while this is drying, we've got our lovely stain there, we're gonna go ahead and set this aside. I'm gonna take my paper towel and just wipe this off. And if I had Windex right here, I'd clean it off, but that's okay. We'll just dry that off. And now while that stain is drying, we're gonna go ahead and cut our shapes out. Now you'll notice we have two pieces of paper that are facing in the opposite directions, which is what we wanted, because we want one to fit on here like that. Doesn't that look cute? Then we're going to flip it over, and the other one will fit like that. So it looks like I did a pretty good job of tracing. Everything's there. So while this finishes drying, and it's almost dry now, it dries really quickly. We are going to go ahead and ink this. I'm going to be using this Tim Holt ink applicator and also one of his alcohol ink stains. This is the espresso color that I was telling you about. And um, you'll see when I put it on the felt that it comes out kind of purplish. And I'm just going to drop a few dots on there in no particular order. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to start dabbing it. And because of this mat underneath here, I don't have to worry about going over the edges or making a mess or anything like that. And for this particular one, I'm just doing an up and down kind of look. But you could also as easily smear it like this and go around. These inks are really fun. They're very forgiving. If it dries out, you just drop another two on. There's not a lot of crafting projects out there in the world that... Um, if you make a mistake, you can just wipe it off the slate. But they have a blending solution that allows you to do that very thing. You can um, completely take all of this color off if, if I decided I didn't like it. And as long as you haven't sealed your design, you can come back at any time and do that. So maybe you're working on a project and you come back the next day and you look at it and you see a spot that maybe you wished you had inked a little bit more. I always keep my little felt pad here for a couple of days afterwards, and I can go back and I can move that ink, I can re-wet it with the blending solution, any of those kind of things. So it's really fun. Alcohol inks work on anything that is a non-porous surface, so metal, glass, not wood or paper. Um, see, I've got my little fingerprint right over there. So I'm going to come back in here. 
and I'm going to go back over it. And because I re-inked it, I've got some brighter spots in there. And the thing that's great about this stuff is you can just layer it and go all over the place and change how it looks. You can go a lighter color or a darker color. And I just kind of wanted to show you how versatile this was. Alcohol inks are one of my favorite things to work with. Okay, um, one of the other very, very cool things about alcohol ink is because it's alcohol, it's extremely quick drying. And so again, that was the ink applicator and the alcohol ink espresso. I'm just going to go ahead and set those out of my way. And we're going to move this. Okay, we've got both of our things cut. This one's dry enough for me to touch. We're going to go ahead and slide those out of our way. And this is Mod Podge. Oh, goodness. <laughs> this is why you should always wipe your lid. Um, I'm actually using the matte version of it today. Um, glossy just makes it a little shiner. This is more of a, a matte look. And because of this surface, I can just pour my Mod Podge, just a little bit of it on my mat, just like so. And then I'm going to go ahead and take my foam brush and just dip a little bit in there. And I'm going to go ahead and with the wood grain, I'm just going to paint on a nice even coat. Now you will want to try not to go too far over the edge. We will seal the edge of it when we're all done with the Mod Podge. But if you can just be a little bit neat and not drip over the sides, you'll probably be a little bit happier with your result. If you can notice, I'm putting enough on here, but not super over the top. I want it to be kind of a nice same amount all the way across. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and take my paper and just line it up across here, all the way up, smooth it out. And then the next thing we're going to do, most people are afraid of Mod Podge for this reason. Um, when it dries, sometimes you'll get air bubbles. Well, the secret to that is using a brayer. Um, this is just one that you can pick up in any craft store. Um, Lifestyle Crafts sells one with their um, letterpress kit. And all you do is just rub over it a few times like this. And this really is the secret because it applies an even pressure and it just helps that paper stick right to it. So now we're just going to flip this over and we're going to repeat the process for the metal side of it. So you want it to look kind of opaque, but you don't want to have any big blobs of it. And if you can pay particular attention to some of those top little bits, that's usually where you would have your most lifting. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead, same thing. Just place this right over the top of it. And when you first put it down, you'll notice that it kind of moves a little bit on you. And that's okay because you know, very few of us can set something down and have it be perfect the first time. And this also gives you an opportunity, like if you were, if you cut it just a little too much on one side versus the other side. Okay, so again, we're ready to do our brain process. And with the metal, just like that, you see how I moved it off? I might have used just a little too much pressure. And you just want to go gently. It's still a little flexible. Okay. So then I'm just going to wipe that edge. That was just a little bit of Mod Podge that came out on the sides. We want to wipe that off. Now I'm going to turn this on the side and I'm hoping the camera can see. You can tell that I actually cut this a little high. 
So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take my scissors while this is drying just a little bit, and I'm just going to trim that off right to the wood. And it's still not quite perfect, but that's what the file is for. And on the metal side of things, I need to be a little bit pickier on that one. So like that little tip, just cut ever so much off of. That one, I'll run my finger around it. And that one came off pretty well. This one is going to have very little filing that needs to do. I did actually a pretty good job tracing. Sometimes I don't do that well of a job. Okay, so now that we've trimmed all of our edges and everything's smooth, there's always just a few little bits that you couldn't quite get with your scissors. We found that the professional grade nail files like you use on acrylic nails works really well to get rid of the excess. So all I'm going to do is sand kind of at an angle. And you'll see the fuzz and everything kind of go all over the place. That's normal, that's fine. Um, we'll take care of that and brush that off. You can see how it kind of sands off the edges and it literally is just sanding off the edge and it makes it one with the edge so that you have a really nice, clean, defined line when you're all done. So I'm just going to keep going around my edges just like this. Paying a little bit closer attention up at the top. And that's going to come off. And there's a little bit more. You can take your finger and go back and see where else you might need to sand just a tad bit more. It's feeling pretty smooth. And come over to the other side. Now, usually when I'm not filming, I would just do this right over the trash can. So the mess all goes into there. paper towel now. Just kind of wipe all those little fuzzy bits off. Now if you find that you have a sharp side even on the metal, you can take your file and sand that metal down just a little bit. To make it smooth because you don't want anyone to pick it up and, and have a cut edge. And at the very at least if it doesn't come off all the way, um, at least it's folded down over the edge. And we're going to ink those edges so you'll never even know that that's there. Again, the paper towel just kind of works wonders with it. Okay, so there we have our sanded Edge. We've got smooth edges all the way around. And the next thing I'm going to do is take the Tim Holtz Distress Ink. This is black soot and also the applicator. Now this one is different. The one that we used for inking the metal was actually like a felt-like piece of material. This one's actually um, a, a foam base. And one of the cool things about these tools is that it has this Velcro base on the bottom of it. So you just apply it on and off that way and you can switch between the felt or the foam applicator. The foam applicator we use a lot for inking edges of cards and layouts and all those kind of things. And all you do is just kind of tap it on your ink pad and kind of load it up. When you're using a brand new one, it takes a few minutes to get enough ink on it. There are a few taps. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to go over these edges just like this. And I'm going to smudge it. And what it's going to do is just give some very, very subtle definition to that outer line of my project. And like if I sanded too much in one spot because it's the same color ink as what I used before, it will just cover all of that up. So just 
just like that. And don't forget your bottom. Now, that brings up a question. Do you finish the bottom or do you not finish the bottom? Um, some people don't like to finish it because then you don't have to worry about it sticking to whatever surface your wood might be on. Um, some people like to finish it all the way. If you seal it, I really don't think it should be a problem. Okay, so there is my paper side of the kiss with the inked edges, and hopefully you can remember from before, it's just added a little bit of definition to it, and it draws your eye into the center. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to turn this over, and I'm going to tap on here a little bit, and I'm just going to go over this edge just ever so. Just enough to darken it, just a wee bit. And don't forget your bottom. Okay, so that's good. And there's what our chocolate kiss looks like with the edges on there. Now all we have to do is go ahead and put on our last coat of Mod Podge. Now if for some reason you decide that uh, you needed to touch up your wood here a little bit, you can do that. You can also, if you want to cheat just a little bit, like if you saw an area because these inks match, you can actually just dip into your ink pad there and go over it and darken up a little spot, or sometimes it just covers up the fuzzies from sanding. Um, so sometimes I'll just go over it with my ink, just like that, just to kind of cover up those little edges. Okay, now we're really done. So all that's left is to go ahead and put on our final coat of Mod Podge. And you want to be even, and you want to make sure that you're dragging your brush in the same direction across your project. And you want to keep that Mod Podge nice and even. see from this front side it's already starting to dry so we'll just have to let the rest of that finish drying and we'll be right back okay so it looks like we're pretty well dry here we have our nice front side here with our paper you can tell it has a nice um, much or matte look to it here's our back side with the metal and if I turn it this way, you can see it, the matte Mod Podge has just a slight gloss, not too shiny. Makes it perfect for a home decor item. Now I know many of you might be thinking, what do I do with a chocolate kiss in my house? Well, it could be a great gift. You could put a couple's name on here. You could put just the date. Um, things like sealed with a kiss. Um, I'm sorry, or everybody needs chocolate, whatever great chocolate saying you have, you could put on here. Um, you could do that in Velcro, or Velcro, you could do that in vinyl, or um, with cardstock and Mod Podge over it. Um, it's really endless what you can do with these wood designs. I've had a lot of fun showing you today how to do this, and I hope that you'll come back often for more ideas, and we look forward to more of these online experiences. Thanks for watching.